Welcome back, Blue Shirts fans, to episode number 657 of the Locked On New York Rangers podcast. I'm your host, John Chick. Just want to thank you guys, as always, for making Locked On New York Rangers your first listen every day. We are free and available on all platforms. And today, very, very special episode for you guys. It's going to be part two of our two-part series here, where I basically just read stories that you guys sent to me describing who you were with and how you celebrated and how you reacted when Artemi Panarin scored in Game 7 against the Pittsburgh Penguins to eliminate the Penguins, vault the Rangers into Round 2, and uh, complete a 3-1 to series comeback for the third time in a decade and the second time against the Pittsburgh Penguins. So obviously there were a ton of great stories. Uh, the first part of this was a ton of fun. I'll leave the uh, link to that episode in the description of this episode in case you want to go back and uh, catch part one as well. We were actually going to record this episode uh, about two weeks ago. I had one episode left before I was going to take vacation for a week. And as fate would have it, uh, the day before I was preparing to do this episode, the Rangers named Jacob Truba their captain. So obviously we had to pivot there, call a little bit of an audible and discuss Jacob Truba uh, becoming the new New York Ranger captain, which is obviously a great honor and a big congratulations once again to Jacob Truba. But that meant that this episode had to wait. And now the time is upon us. We're going to go ahead once again and just uh, read the stories that you guys sent in. Part one was an absolute blast for me. And uh, I'm sure this is going to be the same here. So uh, without any further ado, let's go ahead, dive right into it here. This first story comes to us from Charlie. Hey, John. First off, I want to say thank you for all the content that you dedicate your time to. Also, congratulations on becoming a dad. Thank you, Charlie. Uh, my daughter is actually exactly four months old uh, today, so that that's pretty cool. Um I remember during Game 7 against the Penguins this year, I was at home watching the game with my mom and cousin. My best friend was lucky enough to have this be his first playoff game he went to. Before the game started, I said Fox will either score or assist on the game-winning goal. I had been wearing my first and only jersey I have at the moment, Artemi Panarin. During the intermission before overtime, I sent out a message to our group chat. It was three Fox emojis. When he got that game-winning goal... I just remember the whole sequence so vividly. I remember thinking, this is it, the way Fox was creating space. I was jumping up and down so high and fast like I was in a bouncy castle. Uh, I kept pointing at Panarin's name on the back of my jersey, yelling, I said it, Fox to this guy. It felt poetic that the Ranger, everyone including me, thought was having an off series, takes us to the second round. That just goes to show why I wanted a Panarin jersey. We look at his six goals and 10 assists in the playoffs and still know he can be better. That is just how elite he is. The group needed to feel some pain before all the glory. glory. Uh, it woke them up. These guys were so close this year, they could taste it. I always say the same thing as you. This team doesn't have any glaring weaknesses. If they lose Stromer Cop, I think all they need is just one more center and a real good vet D-man to pair with Schneider. I know at least two good free agents will have seen this run and think they can be the final puzzle piece. These guys are going to have us even be even more proud of them next season. Mark my words. Keep up all the amazing content and let's go Rangers. And yeah, Charlie obviously said this to me before, you know, all the, the preseason stuff happened. He sent this uh, almost immediately, I think after Panarin, you know, scored this goal. And, well, I guess it would have been after the playoffs were were over. Uh, the Ranger playoff run was over, more specifically. But, uh, yeah, you know, hopefully you're a Vincent Trocek fan, Charlie, because obviously that was uh, the prize get of the free agent offseason for the New York Rangers. Once they signed Trocek, it was pretty obvious it was just going to be patchwork after that. But I'm a big Trocek fan. I uh, really like Ryan Strom, really like Andrew Kopp a lot. I think Trocek, as far as just all-around game among the three of them, might be the best of the three. So uh, we'll see how it shakes out for the Rangers. But yeah, I, Charlie, like I said, man, that's that's a really cool story. And uh, hope you're a fan of Vincent Trocek, as I know I am. Uh, keeping it moving right along here, we're going to go to Michael. Uh, this is what Michael had to say. Sending in my experience from that first series. For context, I live in Las Vegas, so everyone here is a Knights fan. My family is from the Bronx, and we bleed blue in this family for as long as I can remember. I converted my wife into a Rangers fan, ex-Vegas Golden Knights fan. When I started to tell her the history of this team and the city and teach her about the players and how incredible everyone has done this year. My grandpa passed away a few years back. I'm sorry to hear that, Michael. Uh, my grandfather passed away a few years back and he was a diehard Rangers fan. My dad is disabled and he lives with me. So I got to watch game seven in my home with my wife and my dad. That moment will stay with me for a lifetime. Everyone who said we couldn't do it and all the smack talk about the Rangers all came to an end with Breddy in overtime at MSG. Very few times I've seen my dad cry 
and very few times I've cried in front of my dad, but we were jumping up and down with tears in our eyes. In that single moment, it felt like we won the cup. Michael, that's an amazing story, man. I'm almost at a loss for words hearing that. I mean, that's why that's why sports are the best, man. You, you get to share these moments with, you know, your family and your friends and your loved ones. And, uh, man, what an emotional moment for you and your family there. And, uh, again, I'm, I'm sorry to hear about your grandfather, but, you know, I, I really hope you enjoyed that moment, uh, you know, watching that game with your, your father there as well as your wife. Uh, sounds like just a, a really emotional moment. And, yeah, I mean, it, it kind of was almost like they had won the Stanley Cup in that moment. I mean, obviously they hadn't, but – I mean, it, it felt like that big of a win, uh, that important of a win. And, uh, you know, yeah, just Ranger fans, man, you really wanted to see them at least win that series because they had had such a great season. Nobody was really taking them seriously. And uh, to beat the Penguins, especially coming back from 3-1 down and staring elimination in the face, down by two goals, game five, game six, and then trailing in game seven and winning that one in overtime, uh, man, it, it just validated their whole season. That's truly an amazing story. And, uh uh, again, all, all my all the best to you, and uh, again, I am sorry to hear about your grandfather, but that is a fantastic story. Uh, moving along here, we will go to Smash Mouth. I don't know the name of this person because uh, I don't remember if it was on Twitter or email. It just said Smash Mouth. Uh, I assume this is not the band Smash. Maybe it is the band Smash Mouth. Maybe, maybe all the members of Smash Mouth are Ranger fans, and they sent this in. But uh, this is what Smash Mouth had to say. First of all, congratulations on the latest addition to your family. Uh, thank you once again. Uh, As a recent first-time dad myself, I can identify with the excitement and exhaustion that a new child brings. I want to start off saying that I really enjoy your podcast with all the passion and insight you bring before and after every game, win or lose. You mentioned on one of the post-Pittsburgh series episodes that you would like to hear from listeners about their experience watching the games. For me, my experience was rocking my newborn to sleep in my hands while trying not to have a heart attack during each epic comeback or overtime period. About the Rangers, obviously you wanted to grab every opportunity you have to win the cup, but if the Rangers don't win this year, I wouldn't be overly disappointed. The reason for that is that almost every cup champion has gone through years of playoff disappointment before winning it all. Washington, Tampa, Pittsburgh, Detroit. The Rangers team is ahead of schedule, and for them to reach the top, Almost requires a couple playoff heartbreaks. Congratulations again on the new baby and much luck with everything. Well, same to you, man. That's cool to hear that you're a new dad as well. And uh, again, you know, obviously this was an email that was sent in, you know, before the Rangers playoff run had concluded. But uh, that's still an awesome story. Uh, Very, very cool to, you know, see that, you know, you got to watch Game 7 while holding your baby. Or I I imagine probably most of the uh, entire playoff series there. Uh, Just great stuff. And I think you make a great point about, you know, how teams often have to go through some playoff heartbreak. I mean, those are some great examples there. And uh, you could even maybe throw the Colorado Avalanche into that as well. You know, they had been a team that uh, was at or near, you know, the top of the entire NHL standings and uh, hadn't really made it that far. I mean, obviously they did, you know, years and years and years ago. But this current crop of Colorado Avalanche players, I don't think it gotten past the second round Maybe they got to the Western Conference once before, the Western Conference Final once before this. But, yeah, this is their big breakthrough season. And uh, hopefully the Rangers' big breakthrough season is right around the corner, uh, hopefully as re- as soon as just a couple of months from now. Uh, that would be awesome to see. Uh, we're going to continue uh, reading all these awesome stories. Love doing this. You know, love hearing from you guys and all the different, you know, experiences that you all enjoyed watching this team uh, in the playoffs, in Game 7 against the Penguins here, just that moment of exhilaration when Artemi Panarin scored the game winner. So we're going to keep going with all your stories in just a second. But first, just want to let everybody know, today's episode of Locked On New York Rangers is brought to you by BetOnline.net. BetOnline.net is the fastest and easiest way to check in on all your betting needs. Find all your favorite sports and events at the number one online source for odds, lines, and games. Find reviews and news of each and every league, including the NHL, Major League Baseball, NFL, NBA, combat sports, esports, and even golf. BetOnline continues to be the top online resource for all your sports wagering information from live in-game betting, scores, and podcasts. They have you covered. Head to BetOnline today or use your mobile device to learn more about the action happening today. BetOnline, where the game starts. And just want to thank you guys, as always, for making Locked On New York Rangers your first listen every day. We are free and available on all platforms. All right, we're going to basically just keep uh, keep rolling here, get to the next story. And this one comes to us from Gabby. 
That's what Gabby had to say about the experience of watching Game 7. I'm a native New Yorker, but currently living in Phoenix, Arizona. Like every other Blue Shirt fan, the playoff series against the Pens was nothing short of an emotional roller coaster. So Gensel makes it 2-1, to one, and I was pretty sure we would at least tie it up, which was a nice shot by Mika. Off we go into overtime, and I remember saying to the spouse, watch this, Fox is going to set up Panarin. And as I finished saying it, then boom, oh my God, oh my God. I was jumping up and down in my living room. At that point, everything else was gravy for the Rangers. I hope this year we get even further into the playoffs. Yeah, that's a great point, Gabby, you know, giving a nice shout out there to uh, Mika Zibanejad because, you know, it's it's very easy to fixate on the uh, the goal by Panarin because obviously it happened in overtime of a game seven. It doesn't get any bigger than that. But, you know, you consider the fact that it never would have happened if, if not for Mika Zibanejad scoring that goal. And at that time, I'm pretty sure the three players on the ice for the Rangers, obviously Mika, uh, three players in terms of the three forwards, you had Mika Zibanejad, you had Alexi Lafreniere, and you had Andrew Kopp who at the time were all playing on three separate lines. And that's where, you know, I just don't understand the criticism of Gerard Gallant to have the guts to kind of roll the dice like that and go with a hybrid line with, you know, five or six minutes left in your season on the line and uh, needing to score a goal to tie it and, and just trusting his instincts and going with those three players. And then they go out there and they, they make it happen. Uh, it was just absolutely awesome to see that uh, come to fruition there. And then, of course, you know, the other play that I, I think can get overlooked in the middle of all this is uh, Keandre Miller, you know, great defensive play at his own blue line in the overtime period, pokes the puck away, then basically wins the foot race to go get the puck, goes in on a breakaway or partial breakaway, really, gets hooked, draws the penalty, and then, of course, the Rangers and Panarin uh, win it on the uh, the power play, the ensuing power play. So, yeah, Panarin, that's obviously an awesome moment, but nice job there shutting out Mika Zibanejad as well. I, I definitely like that uh, for sure. Uh, we'll keep it moving right along here. This one comes to us from a fellow John. This is what he had to say. John, I, like you, was emotionally drained after that wacky series. Uh, the greatest Rangers series comeback without question. I let out a roar in my house when Panarin scored. It was exhilaration and relief at the same time. I wouldn't be able to handle a triple overtime game. No way. Funny story. My cousin texts me right before overtime is about to start asking about the game. He's in his 60s and been a Ranger fan since the late 60s. He's stranded 10 already in Virginia, waiting for... He's stranded at 10 already in Virginia, waiting for auto train to go to Florida. He says cell service there is awful. I tell him overtime is about to begin. Mika forced it with five minutes to go. When Panarin scores, after my screaming, I text him, Rangers win, Rangers win, Rangers win. He asks who scored. I text Panarin power play goal. He said he let out a scream on the train platform. I was so happy I was able to bring him joyous news. It made his 10-hour delay a little more bearable. These last two days, I have such a feeling of euphoria. Nothing can put me in a bad mood. We know regular season means nothing when it comes to playoffs. I guess I should be worried about Carolina after losing three out of four, but I am not. This team is special. At least tomorrow, we don't have to wa watch on pins and needles worrying about immediate elimination. Let's go Rangers. And this came to us from John from New Jersey. And uh, yeah, you know, it's funny because I had a similar takeaway. I remember, and, and again, John obviously sent this while the Rangers playoff run was still ongoing, but I had a very similar uh, reaction, you know, going into game one against the Carolina Hurricanes. Obviously, you know, as a fan, there's still some nerves and you recognize the importance of getting off to a good start in the series and winning game one, especially if you can steal it on the road against a team that's more or less had your number over these past few seasons here. But yeah, what, what a relief it was to finally be able to watch a playoff game where the Rangers' season was not on the line. You know, the season was on the line, game five against the Penguins, game six against the Penguins, game seven against the Penguins, and then finally, okay, we can lose this one and at least our season doesn't end. So uh, I, I had a very similar, you know, feeling going into that Carolina series there for sure. And uh, good call on not being worried about Carolina. Obviously, that was a great series as well. The home team wins the first six games and the Rangers stor storm in there to their building and uh, take care of business and advance to the conference final. What a run that was for this Ranger team. Uh, we've got Eddie here as well. Eddie kind of did this in two separate parts, and we've got a picture for his first one here. He wrote, uh, watch with my brother, barely sat down the entire game, remember my tweet before overtime, and then he sent me this. Uh, hold on a second. There we go. There's a, a tweet. That, that's actually a tweet from myself, and then this is what uh, Eddie had to say for it. And for anybody listening on just audio, I kept doing this during the Ranger playoff run. Every time... The Rangers, you know, had their backs against the wall, 
and they were facing elimination. I just kept sending out the same tweet because I am very superstitious when it comes to this kind of thing. But the tweet very simply reads, got to win a period to keep your season alive. I just kept doing this and doing this and doing this. And it just kept working. So I was not going to go away from this at any point during the Ranger playoff run. But then Eddie uh, responded back to me. And he wrote, uh, you know, this was going into uh, the overtime period. He wrote, Panarin is invisible. Well, he should have fresh legs in overtime. He's done nothing in reg regulation. And uh, yeah, maybe, maybe that was the case. Maybe he, uh, maybe he had fresh legs in overtime. Maybe that helped him on his way there. But it was funny because I was talking to Eddie about this during the Ranger playoff run. Any player that he kind of like, you know, went after on Twitter or on social media or, you know, emailed me about whatever it might be, that player then ended up doing something good, you know, like a couple of minutes later. It was, it was pretty crazy to see. Um, but yeah, no, obviously, hey, whatever works, you know, and uh, obviously Panarin scores in overtime here. That tweet ended up being uh, kind of prophetic uh, from Eddie there. Uh, and then also, shout out to Dan because he's in this screenshot as well. Dan's a longtime loyal listener of the Rangers, and it's just hashtag LFGR. And uh, you can kind of fill in the blanks there as far as what that stands for. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll keep things moving along. Actually, we have uh, part two from Eddie here. He ended up emailing me as well, and we'll uh, bring that up now. Hey, John, so not sure if you'll get this in time, but here's my Panarin and Game 7 story. So I watched basically every Ranger game with my brother, Corey. We had been watching at my house. After Game 4, we switched to his place to change it up. I like that. You know, I'm, I'm very superstitious when it comes to that stuff as well, and sometimes you just need to shake things up a little bit. Rangers get Game 5, but now I start ripping Kreider and Mika for two days for being no-shows. Then Game 6 happens, two goals each. So before game seven, my bro says, I got to rip into Panarin. So I go off on Breadman. Between each period, I'm tearing him up. Before overtime, I go epic on Panarin. And as we just saw in that tweet, indeed he did. Uh, then he scores and we go absolutely ape bleep. High-fiving, running around the house, going absolutely nuts. LOL. That's it. There's my game seven story. And that's a good one, man. Uh, you know what? Hey, if they get back to the playoffs this, this next season, which I think they will... If they start to make a run, Eddie, you're going to have to go off. Any player that's kind of dragging and just not, you know, kind of playing up to, to expectations, we're going to need you to go off on him because obviously it worked this time. Uh, we will get back to our countdown in just – not really a countdown here, but we'll get back to uh, all the emails from you guys in just a second. All right, we got an email from Angela here. Angela says, hey, John, I'm a new listener. My dad got me hooked on your show, and I wanted to still send in my Game 7 story for another part. I've been a casual fan of hockey for years, but it wasn't until this last season that I really got back into the passion of it all. And man, do I have a Game, st yeah. and man, do I have a game 7 story for you. It's going to have a lot of details, so sorry for the length. Hey, no worries about that. We want as many details as possible. I work as a server slash bartender, and luckily, I hadn't worked during the first six games of the series, but on Game 7 Sunday, I had to bartend. This meant two things. One, I wore my Laffy t-shirt under my work shirt for luck, and two, I assumed it would be a typical Sunday night at the bar, slow enough for me to pay attention. Well, turns out, it was the start of graduation weekend in the university town I work in, and the students did not have class the next day. We were slammed. I saw the first Rangers goal out of luck and didn't have the spare time to lean back and watch. For context, I live in Virginia and am one of maybe three Rangers fans in my town that I know personally. Still, guests kept asking about the game and I kept talking. A highlight of the night was when a young guy in a Panarin jersey game came in for a takeout. A sign and we didn't even know. Fast forward to the third period. We're busy but slow enough that I can keep tabs on what's happening and my heart is racing. At this point, I've got many guests at the bar who are immersed in the game as if they were fans, and they're all keeping me updated while I make drinks and take care of other guests. When Mika scored the tying goal, I cheered. My heart was racing. Then, overtime. We had slowed down enough that I could watch without ignoring what needed to be done. There was a group of college guys on one side of the bar. I turned to them and said, okay, does anyone need anything? No one need anything until this game is over, okay? And they said, yes, ma'am. Another two groups on the other side of the bar wouldn't take their eyes off the TV in front of them either. And then, magic. Panarin scores. I swear, we all jumped up and cheered. All these random people, none of them Rangers fans. And still, we all shared that moment. It was magical. Would I have loved to be there when, as my dad put it, the roof blew off the garden? Of course. But in that moment, man, nothing mattered. 
I had to immediately get back to work with my heart still racing. God, what a moment. I was reeling all week, and I still get emotional when I see videos from Game 7. Yeah, that's an awesome story, Angela, and I really hope that, uh, you know, the fact that the Rangers won this game in overtime, hopefully that made your shift uh, a little bit more uh, tolerable for the rest of the night because, man, I mean, I can't even imagine, first of all, working during a Ranger Game 7, much less a Ranger Game 7 that's in overtime, and then, you know, imagine they lose that game and you, you've got to work. I mean, I don't know how how late your bar is open until, but a lot of them stay open until like 2 a.m. And then having to, to work the rest of the night after after seeing the Rangers lose in overtime, that would have been absolutely brutal. So hopefully uh, it was a good rest of the shift for you uh, after Panarin scored here. That's a really cool story as well. And yeah, I mean, I still go back. I still find myself going back and, and checking out clips from Game 7 of this series. There was a video on YouTube that somebody posted, and I highly recommend this for everybody, anybody that's listening to this right now. They posted a video. It's somebody who was actually at the game live in Madison Square Garden. They're kind of in the upper deck, but toward the front of the upper deck, so they got a great view. And they basically recorded the entire overtime period. So you can just kind of watch it as if, you know, you're almost sitting there in Madison Square Garden. And it's just a, a really cool experience. Um, obviously, there's no announcers, You just, which is a good thing because ESPN was, was calling that game. Oh, no, no, that was MSG. Sam, Sam and Joe were uh, still calling that series. But yeah, um, just a really cool video and a great way to kind of relive this. If anybody wants to kind of relive the Panarin winner and do so in kind of a different way and almost in a way that you're in Madison Square Garden, uh, I definitely recommend uh, looking up that video. You should be able to find it on YouTube. And uh, that's my bad because there's actually a, a little extra part to this email here. But uh, the rest of Angela's email, since I live in Virginia, I bought myself a ticket to game one in Carolina in the crowd of Rangers fans at warmups. We all talked about where we were for game seven. And finally, a group of people knew what my hey, 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 hey arm tattoo meant, and they loved it. Bonus, my dad and I got Rangers tattoos together. We made a deal that when we won game seven against Pittsburgh, we would get them. He got the New York Ranger logo on his shoulder, and I got a skull wearing a Bauer helmet with number 93 right on top. That's absolutely awesome. That's that's hardcore there, you know, making the tattoo pact. You know, if the Rangers are going to win this game, we're getting tattoos. I uh, can't say that I've ever done that, but I don't rule it out in the future either. So really cool story, and uh, thanks again for sending that in, Angela. We will move on here to Nick. That's what Nick had to say. Hey, my name is Nick. Just sitting in my Game 7 Round 1 story. I got my fiancé to sit and watch hockey with me this season, and she ended up falling in love with the Rangers and the sport. So for this to be her first Rangers playoff experience couldn't have been more perfect. Though the whole season, I knew we had a solid team, but I always gave them a year or two to develop and could see them becoming the next dynasty team. But I think I speak for all of us when I say this team has taken us all by surprise this year. After the season we had, I knew being down, we still had a chance in all the games since we always seemed to make a push and come back in regular season games and seemed to play better with our backs against the wall. But after games three and four, I was getting concerned. After coming back and forcing Game 7, I just had a feeling we were going to take the series. Before Game 6, I was talking to my family, and I told them if we push Game 7, we have it, and sure enough, it happened. Looking forward to the rest of the playoffs, and hopefully we take it to the end. I know this team is going to be even better next year with the experience and the potential this team has shown all year. Me and my fiancé can't wait to see what this team can accomplish in the coming years. Thanks for reading. Let's go Rangers. Yes, another email here from Nick that uh, was sent in before the Ranger playoff run had concluded, but that's obviously a really cool story, and uh, it, it's kind of similar for me. You know, my wife had seen, uh, there's a team here in Connecticut, or they're not even there anymore, but uh, the Danbury Whalers, I believe they were called, not the Danbury Trashers. The Trashers were a team that, that came into existence a, a long time ago here in Danbury, and there's a great documentary about them, I believe, on Netflix, so check that out if you haven't. But she would go, this is even before we met, she would go to uh, local hockey games, and then, you know, we start dating and I'm like, yo, you got to watch some Ranger hockey with me. You know, if you're if you're a Ranger fan or if you're a hockey fan, you got to, you know, certainly watch the Rangers and, uh, you know, see, see you know, NHL hockey and playoff hockey and all that good stuff. So uh, we've got that in common, Nick. Both of us uh, got our wife into hockey and just a really cool story. Very cool that you were able to get her into it and you guys were able to uh, share this moment together. Uh, we'll keep it moving along here to Pat. Uh, That's what Pat had to say. Game 7 versus the Penguins. Saw it at the Garden with my old man. My dad is a lifelong Rangers fan and myself. Witness history together, and I get chills writing this. The floor was shaking. I hugged my father tight and then got lifted by the worker there. 
video on Instagram. Yeah, that's awesome, man. I, I'm very jealous that you got to see that game live and in person in Madison Square Garden. I cannot even imagine what the atmosphere was like in that in that moment and, and really for the whole game. I do remember watching that game on TV and thinking that Madison Square Garden was not as loud as I kind of expected it to be. I think part of the reason for that, a couple of things. I mean, for starters, all the fans there, I think they were just watching the game so intently and they were just on such pins and needles that you almost forget to like make noise and you know support the team and whatnot. So I think that's one reason. And another reason, you never know exactly, you know, how these uh, different TV companies that cover the game, how MSG had the crowd mic'd up. But I do remember thinking like, man, it's a little bit quiet for, for Madison Square Garden, but that's awesome. And obviously, once that game winner was scored, uh, place just went absolutely nuts. And uh, very, very cool that you got to experience that that game live and in person. That's Probably the best hockey game and the best Ranger moment you're ever going to see live and in person. But who knows, man? Maybe maybe next year you'll be at uh, you know the game where the Rangers win the Stanley Cup. It's, it's at least possible. We will see. I'll keep it moving right along here. We go to Ryan. Ryan says, hey, John, love the show. Keep up the great work. My Panarin story was a bit hectic. My cousin was getting married, and I remember looking at my calendar right before the series started, hoping it wouldn't go to a Game 7. But as we know, it did. So luckily, my cousin didn't have it at a conventional wedding hall, so there were hidden rooms with TVs. Once 7 o'clock hit, I parked myself in the room and watched the game. I saw the Gensel goal, furious, and then had to try and round up my intoxicated family members, which was a tall task. There was about 5 to 10 minutes left. We got in the game, and my uncle put it on the radio. At this point, it's not looking good. And they are down two to one. My aunt and mom are yelling that they lost and we just and just put music on. Then we hear Mika scored and it pops up on my phone and I'm relieved. We get home. I sprint to my TV for overtime. My dad and I are standing a foot away as Keandre went for the breakaway but drew the penalty. Finally, Panarin scores, and my dad and I scream, and then my mom comes running into the living room thinking someone died or something. Uh, I remember immediately sending videos to the most toxic, biased Pence fan on my lacrosse team, and that was that. That's an awesome story, Ryan. A lot to unpack here. So for starters, uh, yeah, Penguin fans, there's some cool Penguin fans out there. You know, Hunter from Locked on Penguins, he does an awesome job with his show. Uh, Alyssa Hope, she's been a guest on this podcast a couple of times. She does a great job with her uh, with her YouTube channel. And there are some cool Penguin fans out there, believe it or not. But there's also uh, Penguin fans that are very much similar to your friend on the lacrosse team there. I assume he's your friend. Maybe not. I mean, I don't know. But um, yeah, th there's there's certain Penguin fans. And granted, there's, there's fans like this from every fan base. But there are certain fans out there that seem to take more joy in the fact that the opponent is is losing, then their team is winning. And don't get me wrong. I love the fact that the Rangers beat the Penguins and knocked the Penguins out of the playoffs. But for me, that was very secondary. I wanted to see this Ranger team win and succeed and make it into round two. And Penguin fans, man, I mean, I, I was hearing it left and right on social media. Uh, people I didn't even know just attacking me. Uh, they were tagging the wrong Locked On Rangers guy. They were tagging Bryce from Locked On Texas Rangers. And he's like, I don't, what's even happening right now? Why, why are these Penguin fans yelling at me? Um, so I get, I definitely uh, can can identify with that story there. Uh, I'm sure you know your your penguin friend there, fan friend there. He was probably letting you have it during uh, you know the, the penguins getting up three games to one, and uh, you gave it right back there. And uh, it, it's funny that you were at a wedding for this because I've told this story once or twice on the podcast in the past, but I can remember during the 2014 run, uh, the Rangers were in the Eastern Conference Finals. They were playing the Canadians, and they were playing uh, in Game 4. It was in Madison Square Garden. Rangers were up two games to one in the series. The game went into overtime, and Marty St. Louis scored the game winner. And I was at uh, one of my best friend's weddings. And when that happened, uh, myself, my wife, uh, both of uh, my friend, who was the groom, both of his sisters and their dates, we all snuck away at the same time to go to the bar there and watch the overtime period. And obviously, St. Louis scored, and uh, that was a great moment. So I'm glad that uh, you know you got to at least listen on the radio while you were at the wedding there, and then got home in time to you know just sprint to the TV and uh, get your chance to see Artemi Panarin scoring the game winner. Very cool story, Ryan. So thank you for sending that in. We move along here to Paul. This is what Paul had to say. Hey, John, Breadman Game 7 story. I live over in the UK, huge Rangers fan. Unfortunately for myself, all the face-off times are generally 12 a.m. to 1 a.m. UK time, but didn't miss one playoff game. 
That's awesome. That's that is commitment right there. Staying up for games there, starting at uh, midnight and one a.m. local time. That that is big time. Plenty of tired days during our run. When our Temi Panarin scored that goal, I was in my bed next to my sleeping girlfriend watching on my laptop. Must have been around three a.m. I've got very good at doing the muted celebration through the last few years, but this one, I couldn't contain myself. I jolted hard and let out a cheer, much to the shock of my peacefully sleeping partner. Her being in a mood with me the next day was definitely worth it. Keep up the good work, buddy. Love listening to the podcast while I'm working. Uh, yeah, thanks so much for listening, man. And uh, you know what? Hey, she'll she'll get over it. I mean, look, I could see, you know, if she got mad at you for, say, you know, a regular season win against the Arizona Coyotes. I, I can understand that. You know what? This is game seven, overtime against the Penguins. Hopefully she cut you a little bit of slack there, uh, you know, in, in a best case scenario for you. And if she was in a mood with you the next day, hey, the Rangers got a game seven win. I think that's worth the trade off. But uh, that's an awesome story, Paul. Thank you for uh, sending that in for sure. And then uh, we'll end with this one. This is a story we got from Michael here. He sent in a couple of pictures, which I'll share with you guys in just a second. Uh, but this is what Michael had to say, uh, detailing his experience of, uh, you know, watching Artemi Panarin knock the Penguins out of the playoffs. Good times. Uh, this is what Michael had to say. I've lived in the Buffalo, New York area for almost half my life, but I grew up in northern New Jersey, close to New York City. I was first introduced to the Rangers by two of my best friends in middle school during the 1993-94 season. Nice timing, right? Yeah, I'd say so. Uh, one of my favorite childhood memories is watching Game 7 versus the Canucks in my basement. My dad worked nights, and my mom had already gone to bed. It was a school night, so I was by myself. Helmetless Craig McTavish with his great mop hair won what seemed like about eight defensive zone face-offs in the last minute of play, and finally, the curse was over. Rangers win. I jumped up on the coffee table, shouting, smashing my head on the drop ceiling, and woke my mom right up. Panarin Series winner reminded me so much of that moment. My wife grew up a Bruins fan, so she doesn't want anything to do with these games and was already up in bed. My two daughters are in third and fourth grade. They're all in for the Broadway Blues, but again, this game was on a school night, and we only let them stay up for the first period for those games. They know we won if they hear the Rangers' goal song blasting on our Alexa speaker first thing in the morning instead of their alarms. So I was on pins and needles by myself on the couch, sending the occasional nervous text to my buddy, Matt. One of the other Ranger fans I know out here in Western New York as overtime gets going and then during that timeout during the power play. When Panarin gets on the puck and kind of slithers his way in closer, I felt like something was up. Honestly, I thought he'd been way below par so far in the series and probably still hurt from whatever happened to him at the end of the regular season. So I didn't have a ton of faith that he'd be the man to do it. But that beautiful mop hair was flowing under his helmet as he needled his way in there and let it go. And I knew it was in for sure. I kind of hunched forward on off the couch and I kind of lurched forward off the couch and banged my shins on the coffee table jumping and fist pumping silently. For a couple of seconds, I was able to contain myself and keep quiet, but then I couldn't resist. I clicked my phone Bluetooth over to Alexa and let the goal song rip full blast. Woke the whole house up. Woke the whole house up with it. Kids loved it. Wife hated it, but it was definitely worth it overall. Great memory for me and probably the first big Ranger memory for my kids too. Absolutely fantastic story. That's two stories now where uh, you know somebody's wife was not too happy with them celebrating. But you know what? Again, you know it, it's Game Seven overtime. This is not you know a regular season game against some random Western Conference team. You're playing the Penguins in overtime. You know I, I hope that she wasn't too mad at you. And even if she was, hey, you were excited. Both your daughters were excited. She's outvoted three to one. It's okay to celebrate. Uh, you know, a Game Seven overtime victory. I would say. And as I mentioned just a second ago, uh, there were a couple of. Uh, Pictures sent in by Michael as well. So I want to share those with you guys as well. We'll go to that right now if I can figure out how to do this here. There we go. And there's a, a picture from Michael there. He's, he's texting with his friend during, uh, or I guess after the overtime period. And uh, just a picture of Michael with just complete relief on his face. And then uh, this picture is just awesome. There's a picture of Michael with his two daughters. 
And uh, that's so cool, man. I mean, th th those are the best that, you know, when you can share these moments with, um, you know, with your family members and friends and loved ones or whatever it might be, and uh, just kind of uh, bask in the glory of, of these awesome Ranger moments that uh, we're blessed enough to experience every now and then. Just a really cool uh, picture there, a really cool story. And I just, I feel like I'm almost looking into the future here. You know, obviously my daughter is four months old, but man, in a couple of years, I, I really hope that this is kind of a very similar to what's going on in my household. I hope, you know, the two of us and, and my wife as well, we're all watching you know, these Ranger games together. And uh, I think a lot of us could probably do without another Game 7 overtime, but hopefully, uh, you know, celebrating something involving the Rangers. You know, maybe like a, a Game 4 overtime win to complete a sweep or something like that. Or maybe even a Stanley Cup victory. I mean, they're, they're set up that they should be contenders for uh, at least the next few years here. So, Again, great story, Michael. Thanks for sending in the picture as well. And thanks to everybody for listening to the show, for sharing these experiences. Like I was saying, I mean, this is uh, really, really cool. These are some of my favorite episodes that I've ever done on here. Just uh, sharing the experiences as told by you guys. Because, uh, again, these these are the moments that we all share together as Ranger fans. And uh, absolute blast uh, doing the, these two episodes with you guys. Maybe next year, if the Rangers have another you know dramatic overtime playoff win, we'll, we'll do the same thing. And if not... You know, maybe they can just win the Stanley Cup without a dramatic overtime win. You know, we, we could keep our fingers crossed and be hopeful about that. Um, but if there's not a dramatic overtime win in next year's playoffs, maybe we'll go back in time to the Derek Stepan overtime winner. We'll talk about what everybody was doing and who they were with when Derek Stepan scored in uh, Game 7 against the Capitals. Or maybe we'll go in the Wayback Machine and uh, you guys can share your stories about Stefan Matteau back in 1994. Some of you guys that sent these stories into me probably weren't even alive when that happened, but that's okay. Uh, we'll, we'll definitely look forward to doing something like this again in the future. Uh, but that will do it for today, guys. Once again, if you'd like to get in touch with this podcast, please send an email to LockedOnNYRangers at gmail.com. Once again, that is LockedOnNYRangers at gmail.com. Definitely give us a follow on Twitter as well, at LO underscore NY underscore Rangers. Once again, that is at LO underscore NY underscore Rangers. Thanks again, guys. I'll see you next time.